Finding Dory. Uh, it's the follow-up to 2003's Finding Nemo. Uh, Rad, quickly, what's the premise? Okay, so in Finding Nemo, that was about a clownfish who goes searching for his uh, his son across the ocean, and he has the help of Dory, this blue tang who has short-term memory loss. And in that movie, Dory was more of just kind of this clownish sidekick. Uh, this movie, she takes center stage, and so she, I mean, as you heard in the clip, she starts getting fragments of her memory back, and she realizes she has a family that she lost a long time ago, and she goes out in search of her family, despite the fact that she could barely remember them. Um, and you know, what really struck me about this movie is just kind of this intimate and really emotional way that it dealt with her memory loss as a disability, uh, kind of the struggle she has to just perform basic functions, the f- sense of isolation she feels because of that struggle. Mm-hmm. It, 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 I haven't seen a kid's movie tackle that with such maturity or t- tackle anything it's been, with such maturity. It's been praised for exactly that, how yeah. it treats living with disability. Mm-hmm. How did you find, uh, Rachel, the way that the film treated uh, Dory's condition? Yeah, similarly. Like, like, overall, what's interesting is that she's not the only character. So there's an octopus who's missing a tentacle. There's a beluga whale that's had an injury and has lost its ability to echolocate. Um, um, and Nemo himself was born with a, or has a, a damaged small fin. And mm-hmm. so there, there are all these characters who are dealing with, um, with, with a disability of some kind or another. And so, um, you know, the, the, the film itself, you know, in, 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 in not a heavy handed way, kind of presents this world in which um, it's not so much overcoming, um, but living with and being accepted. And, and I think it's, uh, you know, it's interesting because there is this, this rising movement, um, particularly around conditions like autism, say, which diagnoses are growing about representation, you know, and 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 how conditions are treated. And I remember when um, the the old Star Trek series was on TV, and Data, the, the 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 character was seen by a lot of people with Asperger's and autism as being someone who represented that. And so I think mm. it kind of the film, I think, kind of speaks to the fact that there aren't a lot of a lot of images of people with disabilities, and and this is one. I mean, there was one character that's been getting some criticism. It's one yeah. sea lion, Gerald the sea lion, mm-hmm. which is sort of depicted in the kind of. I mean, a lot of kids' movies often have like a dumb character who's played for laughs and in this movie it's that sea lion who still has that role so there's how this film treats disability there's also this trend we're seeing in this film uh included towards more complex emotions in kids films of course uh, inside out probably being the greatest yeah. example mm-hmm. i mean that was very complex mm-hmm. too complex for me yeah. I think. Uh, <laughs> unfathomable <laughs> yeah oh. rachel what, what do you think is driving that trend towards representing more complex emotions in kids films we've talked about you know zootopia and these mm-hmm. films representing you know political and social issues but complicated emotions. What do you think I think part that? of it is um, demanding adult audiences that are seeing films with their kids. And so I think part of it is the expectation that you're actually making movies that aren't just for an under 13 audience. You're making it for the people that are going to see the movies with them. I think part of it is the kind of storytelling that you can do now as 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 um, animation gets better and better and better. And I think, you know, Up comes out and people find this resonance in it. Inside Out comes out and there's this resonance. Um, even something like, which didn't get a ton of attention, but The Good Dinosaur was another kid's movie right. that is like leveling in how emotionally painful it is. The separation. I hated that movie. Oh, sorry. man, it yeah. killed me. <laughs> um, so I think part of it is um, you have, you know, a very savvy generation of parents who want to feel something too and are pushing back against all the princess movies as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and I think, um, and, uh, you know, I think that, you know, things like Harry Potter also, like that that series of books and the series of films had a huge adult audience. So I think part of it is filmmakers aren't thinking about just speaking to kids. They're thinking about speaking to generations. Stephen, yeah. you say you love these Pixar films. Yeah, why, I love Why them. is that? Well, I mean, I think they're some of the best scripts that are out there. I mean, I think when, you, when you're in this environment of going to the movies, the chances that you're going to find a real story and some kind of psychological realism in these stories – Actually, the the animated movies are probably the most likely you're going to get. They're they're often the deepest. They had like as you say, Inside Out had this incredible um, psychological portrait of adolescence, was which you know you're not going to find even in the art house movies, <laughs> right? And so, I mean, part of it I think is you know we kind of underrate the previous generation of children's films. Like uh, you know I think. These children's stories, these fables, have always been about complex psychological things, and they've also they've always also had a lot of pain in them. You know, Hansel and Gretel. Mm-hmm. Your your dad is too poor, so he leaves you out in the woods to starve to death. That's the beginning of the story, right? <laughs> so, like, th- there's also a lot of emotional pain there. But I think there is this. Um, th- this is where the some of the best storytelling 
in fil- or really anywhere hmm. I think is found is in these is in these animated films, these Pixar films. They really have taken it to a point where I mean there are almost no bad ones now. Yeah, you know, R- Rad. What what impact do you think uh, this new Pixar trend is going to have on on young viewers? Well, I mean. I mean, when it comes to young viewers, I got to say, I, I took my six-year-old son to Inside Out, and it went over his head. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I hope mm-hmm. that, over, you know, as he grows with these movies, they will be more sensitive. And, you know, uh, I mean, I, I, like you were saying, I think this is coming out because we are more open to discussing emotions. We are more open to discussing kind of mental health and stuff. Um, I mean, especially with uh, Inside Out. I mean, the climax of that movie deals like sp- explicitly with fighting depression, right? So when you have... Uh, kind of the canon for young children dealing with these complexities. I just hope that you know they'll grow up and be more, be more aware of of what's going on inside of them. Mm. And I th- and I think a lot of movies will probably follow suit. 